All right, here we are at a, a beautiful campus, which I'm gonna show you with our office manager, Ayami. Say hi. Hi. There we go. And so we're gonna do a quick tour for you at one of the top universities in the world and one of the top in California, and that is uh, the California Institute of Technology. Um, even though I'm repping my Harvard sweater, we are here and we're gonna do a little tour for you in Pasadena, California, where the weather is beautiful. And we're gonna be covering a couple of key, key things that you should be thinking about now that it's January for those applying to college. So what's first on the menu? Financial aid. Okay, so in terms of financial aid, uh, hopefully by now you've submitted your FAFSA form. Um, if you have not submitted your FAFSA form, uh, you need to get on top of that. Even though it's due in June, the earlier you submit it, the higher chance you can get financial resources from the university and so forth. Uh, well, by the way, our first stop over here is this interesting, what looks like a auditorium, uh, amphitheater uh, inside, not exactly sure, but it looks pretty cool. Um, so we'll walk by that. And anyway, you wanna make sure that you are looking into uh, the FAFSA form as well as thinking about what different mechanisms and ways you'd be paying for college as soon as possible now. If there's available scholarships, private scholarships, fellowships, uh, even private organizations that could be able to help you out there, you definitely wanna be on top of that. So again, financial aid, very, very important. Have a strategy, start looking into that really, really uh, urgently because if there are scholarships, there are fellowships and so forth, you wanna basically be able to pounce on those and not uh, be in a situation <clears throat> where you're left behind and you're leaving money on the table because you did not apply soon enough. Um, what's next? Wait, listen to for a minute. Awesome, so let's imagine you've uh, applied to a bunch of schools and now you're getting waitlisted because they may think you're a good applicant, but they wanna take a look and see who else is uh, out there. And so if you're waitlisted, there's two ways that can really help you out. One is what we call a Loki or a letter of continued interest. And in that letter that you really wanna be thinking about you wanna be thinking about uh, what you've been doing since you applied. So update them on any grades uh, that you've gotten, any, um, any awards, uh, any uh, you know, accomplishments, activities, anything like that. I think that would be very, very helpful for you uh, to update the school and go to visit the school, take a look at it, check it out because it's very, very important to let them know that you really care about that university if you have the means and the ability to do so. Take a look at that school, talk to students, talk to alum, talk to uh, faculty, talk to admissions officers to get a better sense of what are your options. Here's another quick stop. I can't remember what this building was called, uh, but it's another building. And then over here is a lily, uh, a lily garden over there. Oh, and there's another one right over here. Hopefully you're not gonna get dizzy. Right over there, boom, is a lily garden. So that should give you a little bit of a, a sense of what the campus looks like here at Caltech. And back to uh, the letters of rec. So you wanna be able to talk to even admissions officers to be able to then use their names in the letter of continued interest uh, to give you a better sense of, uh, and show the school that you really care that that is your number one program. Uh, and then see if you can even get a letter of uh, recommendation, an additional letter of recommendation, ideally from an alum of that school, so that they have a better uh, sense of you know why you qualify and why you would make a great fit for that university. Uh, so those are two things that you could be doing from that perspective. So again, a letter of continued interest and an additional letter of recommendation uh, for uh, that school. Uh, what else is on the menu? How about interview prep? Okay, so imagine, you got into or you're going to get interviewed at a school, for example, Harvard, some of the top universities will interview you. So you definitely want to prep for that. And prepping for that is extremely, extremely important because it is a it will definitely help you. Um, and if you're on the fence, it could hurt you if you really don't prep well. So the way that you want to do that is get past questions, find out what is the mode of uh, questions that they ask, what is their uh, protocol, are they doing, uh, are they only getting interviews by admissions officers, do you have to go to the school, can you do it via Skype, is it all in person, are alum doing it, uh, oh here's a cool one, Parsons Gates Hall administration over here, over there is something about the humanities, I don't even know they had humanities at Caltech, but there you go, uh, so I guess they do all kinds of programs, not just technology, kind of like MIT, but on this side of the world. Um, in any event, so you want to basically be able to prep with actual questions, know exactly what is the form of that university uh, so that you get a sense of, uh, of that process as well. And then prep with people, keep practicing, practicing so you can get your decorum, your demeanor, 
down. You know, you want to basically look authentic and genuine and answer good, solid uh, responses to the questions asked. Um, so that's the interview prep process. You may get interviewed, and if you do, you don't want to drop the ball. You want to be well on top of that and prepared to be able to do that. And now, last but not least, what else are we talking about? What should they be doing between now and next fall? Perfect. So, again, if you're on the fence, you haven't, you know, you haven't heard back yet. What should you be doing? Well, I told you about waitlist letters that you should be checking out the campuses. So be proactive. Go check out the campuses. You know, when you do or if you do. Um, get a sense of uh, figuring out what school you're going to go to. You definitely want to be able to um, you definitely want to be able to have a better sense of which school you're going to go to. If you end up getting into several, then you want to be able to hit the ground running over there. You can see some Cal students who are doing all kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> uh, technical, I assume um, in any event. So you want to basically check out the campuses. You want to be proactive about doing volunteer work, uh, proactive about your classes, proactive about all kinds of stuff. That way, um, even if you get waitlisted, you have something to talk about. Um, if you know you go check out the campus, you'll, ha you'll know exactly which school you want to go to because you've checked it out during this down period um, and so forth. And you also can be proactive, as I said, about classes, volunteer experiences, just general accomplishments to kind of add to your profile should you, uh, you know, again, be waitlisted. So I think that should basically cover the main four points, financial aid, interview prep, waitlist strategy, as well as what you should be doing while you are waiting to hear back from the universities. Again, Right Track can help you with all that stuff. And for those thinking about applying next fall, we also have a number of programs that could prep you throughout this whole period to get you really to hit the ground running for next year. Just hit us up on info at righttrackadmissions.com. That's us saying bye-bye bye. from Caltech and giving you a nice tour of this awesome campus. Sayonara.